everyone and welcome to Paris or should I say welcome back to Paris because this video is part two of my two-part series on this very short trip to this city and if you would like to check out the previous video that I did you can check out the link up above it's also down in the description below and oh my god can I just say how much I'm loving Paris right now I'm so glad I came here so in that video we went to just like the regular tourist sites you know we had a relaxing tourist day which I don't do very often, and it was a refreshing change to do that. So we went to the Eiffel Tower, we went to the Champs Elysees, we went to the Arc de Triomphe, and we also went to, where did we go? We went to the Louvre, that was it. And I just had the best day. So today I'm continuing in that vein by visiting some other areas in this city that I have been recommended to me. I'm so excited, let's get going. Now, if you're new, welcome. And also just to answer a question which is likely to come up. So I'm not on like a quick trip from London. I'm not staying in a hotel in the center of Paris. I've been traveling full time for about three years. I've been in Mexico and Canada. I'm actually on my way to Belgrade and then Indonesia via Paris and London. So um, I'm staying in like the outskirts, which is where I am now. So I'm very much in the Eastern side of Paris, kind of just outside the perimeter, like ring road around Paris. And um, you know what, this is a good thing because I think when you see a lot of Paris videos it's, it is all about the Eiffel Tower you know a bit like the last video I did but it's good to come out to these areas to see you know real life in Paris and it very much reminds me of like suburban life in London it's kind of exactly the same in many ways great architecture it's quiet you know and it almost feels like like East London you know um, any Londoners will know what I mean it's very ethnic and very diverse so um, we're gonna now head to an area that's very close to here. It's a cemetery, which I didn't know existed until like a week ago. So um, off we go. Okay, I'm just on my way there and you'll see why this is relevant in a moment. So it's a music shop, Chopin, the famous pianist. I used to play the clarinet and be in an orchestra and I used to play a lot of his pieces. Um, you'll see in a moment why this is important. I'm whistling the tune from outside. How fantastic is that? So I've just arrived at Père Lachaise Cemetery. Apologies for the pronunciation. Feel free to correct me in the comments down below. <laughs> and you know what? I love cemeteries. That might sound slightly macabre, but it's the truth. So I've been to many in the world. There was one in Sydney, Australia, Recoleta Cemetery in Buenos Aires, and the huge one I went to recently in San Luis Potosi in Mexico, full of these huge tombs, mausoleums. They're just spectacular. And the reason I love them is because they tell such a detailed history in a way of a city, a country, whatever. And this one has three particularly tombs or graves that I want to see. I think the words I would use here are old and impressive because this cemetery is made up of a lot of crypts, graves, mausoleums, tombs, whatever you want to call them, mainly for families. So there's a lot of family crypts, most with French names dating back to like the 1800s and early 1900s, but also some Jewish ones as well. So obviously you can tell by the names like Rubinstein and Zimmerman, but as with most Jewish graves, they have the Star of David on them. So you can identify that they are Jewish. And um, you know, I love these like tall and narrow crypts. They're very intricate in terms of the design. You can tell that I'm a cemetery geek. Sorry if you're not, but I am, so it's tough.
So as I said, there are many famous figures buried here. That lady looks a bit like me after a day of English lessons. But we are going to Chopin's grave. So for any music lover, you'll know this is an epic moment. Because as I said before, I played a lot of pieces of his in the past, back in the day. There's lots of musicians and artists here, I believe. There's like little pianos on graves and stuff. Um, so like a string instrument, violin, viola, whatever, behind me. So that was nice. That older couple back there, they were Polish, so I could hear them speaking. And um, the woman was playing some music, I'm assuming Chopin, on her phone. And it just added to the atmosphere. I thought it was like coming from like a player somewhere by the grave, but it was from her phone. So um, it's a nice touch. I didn't want to hang around because they looked like they were having a bit of a moment. The next one is um, Jim Morrison, the lead singer of The Doors. So yeah, Jim Morrison, lead singer of The Doors, died in 1971, 27 years old. I didn't really realise he was that young. And apparently at the time, there wasn't like law to do an autopsy. So that the, the um, cause of death wasn't clarified. And um, yeah, The Doors amazing band and again with um, my orchestra back in the day at school we used to do like more modern hits and pieces and that was one of them like my fire one of their most well-known um, songs so um, obviously it's quite busy a lot of people as you can see so it's cordoned off um, but yeah on to the next one the third one I wanted to see was Oscar Wilde um, and there's a really nice letter at the bottom that almost touched me a bit from another writer who basically talks about how the fact Oscar Wilde has influenced him so much in his work. So, um, and there's like lipstick marks all over the, the glass as well, um, which is an interesting touch. And it and it's almost looks like sort of Egyptian in terms of the design of it. So, um, yeah, Oscar Wilde, Jim Morrison, Chopin. Before we go for some lunch and move on to our next spot, I've got to say this, Paris is surprising me, even to the point of shocking. <laughs> because I think it goes back to what I said in the last video about the fact that I'm from London, I'm from so close to Paris, I've never been here before and it's never been somewhere that's particularly interested me. I'd rather go to places far, far away, but I was mistaken. There was so much to offer in Paris that I didn't even know was here. And that's nothing about Paris, it's my own naivety, I think. But yeah, you could stay here all day, literally. Just look at it, it's beautiful. Now for something completely different, I've gone off the subway at Blanche station and guess where I am? It's only the flipping Moulin Rouge. Epic. And as I said in the last video about 573 times, iconic. <laughs> iconic Paris. And I think you're going to be surprised by this, but one of the last movies I saw in the cinema, yeah I know it was in 2001, I don't go to the cinema a lot, was Moulin Rouge with Nicole Kidman and Ewan McGregor. I even bought the album with the songs. Amazing, you know. And I'm going to go up into um, Montmartre again. Pronunciation problem, but you know, you know what I'm talking about. I understand that it's an area that's um, a bit less touristy, if you know what I mean. But we'll see what happens. Moulin Rouge, Red Mill. So I want to end this video not by going to a live strip show behind me in the red light district, but walking around Montmartre we're going to do a bit of a montage and at the end give a few little final thoughts about Paris itself okay someone literally just crashed their car as I was filming this this area of Paris kind of epitomizes Paris for me in terms of culture and art and history and everything yeah there's the Eiffel Tower and that but we've all seen Moulin Rouge music red light district etc but also in Montmartre, it's famous for art, history, in terms of Van Gogh, Picasso, they both live there. So we're gonna go for a bit of a walk and give some final thoughts about my time in Paris, our time in Paris, before we go.
Okay, we're back at the Moulin Rouge. It's time to bring this video to a close. That area was really nice. You know, high up, great views of the city. And I just want to run through a few things to bring this to a close, quite short and sharp. If you're thinking about writing in the comments, you went to Paris and didn't go to the Eiffel Tower. It's in the other video, for the love of God. It doesn't take much to click up the top, you know. I'm joking. Um, no, I'm not joking, actually. <laughs> but anyway, yeah, I've only got positive things to say about Paris, okay? As a Brit, and I think if any of you are watching that are Brits, you'll probably agree with me in that growing up, you know, there was a bit of negativity about Paris and France, you know, rivalry between French and English. And I've got to admit, I had that view, I had that perception. And as I said earlier, Paris has shocked me in a way. I've really enjoyed it here. And it's a city that I wish I came to earlier. And if you're sitting there thinking, oh, Paris, it's dirty, everyone pisses in the street and people are rude. Forget that, come here and make up your own mind because in terms of the French people, that has been the biggest element of growth for me because yeah, I have always had that view that French people can be quite rude and wait for it French people if you're watching, but actually it's the opposite. You know, I were walking down the street and random strangers that I don't know will say bonjour and I've been flabbergasted by that, surprised because I didn't expect it. You know, in England, you walk down the street, if you see a stranger, you put your head down, you don't look at them, let alone say hello to them. So um, that has been majorly surprising for me. It might sound like something really little and stupid, but it's the truth. Um, so it's definitely something that I am, well, I do anyway, having been in Mexico, but I'm going to make more of a conscious effort to do that myself in future, even in the UK, which brings me on to the fact that I'm going there tomorrow for the first time in about two years. So. Um, There'll be a few videos from London. There'll be one other one before the London videos start. Oh, someone's pram just fell over. Luckily, there was no baby in it. But anyway, yeah, I hope you've enjoyed the two Paris videos. Uh, leave a comment down below. Let me know what you think of Paris if you've been here. That would be great. And um, I'll see you soon. Don't forget to subscribe and all that. Lovely jubbly. Shush. I'll catch you later. Tonight there's no way back.